Hello, everyone, <laughs> and welcome to Archived Conversations, where we talk about contemporary art and politics. Uh, today we have a special guest, Jefferson. My name is Mia, and this is Jefferson. Hi, <laughs> um, and do you want to go ahead and give a little intro, some background about yourself? Yeah, my name is Jefferson. Um, many people know me in our community as a photographer. Um, I have taken quite a break from serious photography lately and exploring other mediums. Right now, I'm also focusing on work, my personal life, maybe getting back into some art, but right now, I'm just taking it slow. Past few years have been a bit rough on everyone. Um, but yeah, a little yeah. bit about myself. I'll probably get more into it later on, explaining my yeah. works. Definitely. Um, so I'll kind of go over, you know, how I learned about, like, met you and stuff. So we probably knew, like, kind of knew each other through, like, CTR a little bit. But I feel like the first time that we really started to talk more was uh, when you came into the ceramics class. And um, I didn't really know at the time that you did photography at all. Um, but later on, I learned that's that seemed to be, yeah, like the main medium that you were working in. Um, and even so after looking at your uh, photos and uh, what you were making in ceramics, like it seems like a lot of the themes and the, just the way that it looks uh, both like are a little darker. Um, yeah. And we'll talk we'll talk more about that later, too. But in so when i was planning this podcast type deal i was originally gonna just talk about art like in layman's terms um with artists and things like that but i was kind of thinking i was really just trying to figure out what i was trying to do with these conversations and i just found that talking just talking about art in general it, wasn't really like inspiring to me, even though I think it's important to create more access for like art spaces by talking about things without all the excessive like jargon that you would get in most educational spaces. But I was trying to figure out what else I wanted to do. And then I started thinking about like, what could I talk about like all day? And like one of the things was politics. Um, so I kind of had this idea of like making something that was a little bit more political, but I didn't really know fully yet. And then I saw on Instagram, you had posted something. I forget what the, uh, what, I think it was like some news story, some headline. And, and you said something like, y'all are about to make me, like make political Jefferson come out again or something like that. And I was yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> So like that was one of the reasons why like when I first started thinking about like who would I want to have on like just off the top of my head before I publicly asked um, like you were one of the first people I thought of uh, just because that like really stuck in my mind for some reason. Um, and again, I don't even remember what the post is about because we're going through a crisis every single day, it seems like. <laughs> But I was just like, yeah, we all need to like let our political selves out and like be loud and like talk about this stuff because there's no way that we can stay out of it anymore. Like, there's just no way. So that 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 honestly like was a a bit of a piece of inspiration to this whole show. So I'm glad that you're my first guest. So thank you. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. It's it was definitely just, I wanted to take a step back from the political work that I yeah. had been posting and stuff, or in posting in general. Um, I wanted to make art something personal to me yeah. a little bit before I started publicating my work again on Instagram because it's, it's a platform where like people are trying to get away from because of all this stuff happening with like the privacy, everything's being censored. And I kind yeah. of 
didn't want to put myself in a box having to fit this like algorithm. So I just took kind of step, kind of took a step back, kind of started posting just random things I had in my camera roll. But it just gets to a point where you have to make your voice heard in some way, and like expressing yourself through art, I think is very important. And I believe anyone sh- can do it and should express a- express themselves through art. Well, I hear a lot of people say. Um, Oh, I'm not talented. I'm not skilled. It's it's a learned thing. It's a learned attribute, and it comes with time. I mean, you just get better. You just have to do it. Better. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's that's funny. I I, like I relate to like the taking a step back a a lot Um, because I I would say like in undergrad, like a lot of my work was pretty political. And then when I started like focusing on illustration as like a job, I kind of was like stepping away from that. And I was just trying to create images that were like pretty and make kind of made you forget about all the awful stuff going on. But now with everything going on, I'm just like, I don't want to do anything else except for try to do something that might mean something like bigger, I guess, down the line. Not that it's like, I just think it's important to have, I think these conversations can be really important. And I just wasn't being fulfilled. There's a couple reasons why I kind of stepped away from illustration, but it's like one of one, one of the little reasons was just not feeling completely fulfilled in what I was doing. Um, and it, that's, you know, you could talk about that all day, but I, I definitely relate to that a lot, but and it coming to a point where it's like, I want to do something. I got to yeah. say something. Got to, like, because <laughs> everything going on, so. Yeah. I can relate because I started um, applying for shows. And the things that were getting accepted at these shows and the themes of these shows were, weren't my style. Yeah. My style is mainly kind of like political very street mm, yeah style artworks mm-hmm. and I was applying to these shows and it was more of the, on the fine art side of things yeah and it just like I think you're, it's the same thing you kind of get demotivated mm-hmm. right you kind of adhere to that box of what's selling and what's what's good art you know, it's just weird. It's a weird thing to yeah. be an artist. And yeah, I mean, even I now. Monetize. Right. Like, even now, it's like, you're, as an artist, like, you're not, you're not, like, just an artist anymore. You're, like, your social media manager. You're, like, a brand. Like, you kind of become a brand. Um, and I know that you know Emiliano. Like, he's going to be on the show, too. But that's what his show is all about, is, like, the artist as, like, commodity and stuff like that. So true. It's it's definitely, like, I've been grappling with it for a while now, and I I was just, I finally was just like, I don't care how my, like, but, like, just a couple weeks ago, I was like, I just don't care that, like, my stuff is going to be, like, uniform and perfect anymore. Like, I don't care anymore because it doesn't matter. Like, in the grand scheme of all of this, like, it doesn't matter anymore. (laughs) Um, So... Yeah. You kind of become an influencer. Yeah. Uh, ex- like, and that goes back to the whole brand thing. So, and it's, it can be really frustrating to deal with because these are the biggest platforms that everyone is on. So it's like, if you want to reach people, you got to be on these platforms. And it feels that way at back, least. Sorry, bring it back politically. You're also kind of told if you want to have a bigger audience, you can't like polarize your audience. So you can't talk about certain issues and some, but like, it's hard. It's hard not to like, yeah, sure. You might get more likes or more followers, but at the end of the day, like it doesn't feel like fulfilling. It's back to that thing where it's like, if you're passionate about these subjects and these issues going on, you're going to use your platform. You have to. You because have it's to. important yeah it's important as an artist like it kind of goes back to that brand thing it's your brand at the end of the day it's who you are and 
you know, it's kind of hard to hide that. It's eventually yeah. going to come out. Exactly. It can even come off as inauthentic if you're trying, you know, to stifle parts of yourself. So, yeah. um, <clears throat> but I wanted to go ahead and start asking you specific questions about, uh, you know, uh, your work. So, like, when would you say you started to get into art making and then specifically, like, photography? Like, when did you pick up a camera? So, for art, um, it's very cheesy, but I just, everyone, when they're little, you make shit. But I remember specifically, um, I grew up in Colombia for a little bit, and I remember going um, to McDonald's and like stealing straws with my grandma, and I would cut little straws straws up and then like glue them on a paper and make stuff. Uh huh. Um, so I've always that's where like the gorilla type street style comes from. Found and objects. <laughs> yeah, and I I loved it. Um, but I had it. I took a break from art in high school, where I was like trying to focus on the business aspect of like going to school, like working on my future. But I didn't feel connected to that. I couldn't take art classes because I was required to take certain credits. Yeah. And after I graduated high school, I'm like, no, I can't. Uh, my senior year, I was able to get serious, kind of like serious about photography. But we had an art club where we would go out and take pictures. And I would always lean towards the camera. The art teacher had like a little studio set up in her classroom. Nice. I remember just like loving picking up the camera, going wherever I want, taking pictures of whatever I want. And I was just so, so hyped that I like begged my mom for a camera because I, I, I got like beginner to your camera and mm -hmm. I remember going um, like a point and shoot um, thing or was oh, it a little more advanced okay yeah my mom always had a point and shoot and I love taking pictures on the point and shoot yeah but it wasn't at the point where so this was like middle school where I would play with the point and shoot and stuff like that right right I would take um pictures of sneakers I was a huge sneaker head in middle school it's so funny I forgot about that um I would set up shots of the sneakers make edits on my iPod and stuff like that nice but I didn't really think of it as like photography I just wanted to post cool stuff on my Instagram but high school is when it kind of got more creative with that art club and the art teacher so senior year I did end up taking uh, I think it was a digital class or something where we were able to use a camera um, and making edits and stuff like that. But yeah, I got serious during um, kind of a senior trip to New York where I finally got my camera and I took some pretty decent beginner shots, some street, street stuff. Um, I joined a family friends photography club and they're a bit older. They're like 50s, 40s and up. And they've been in the photography game for quite a bit. And they're more on the fine art side of things and very, they do um, critiques. So everyone, the first Wednesdays of the month, they'd get together, you'd submit photos, everyone would critique them in the room. And they were put on blast. They put That's your, great. <laughs> yeah, they put your photo, whatever you submitted <laughs> on the big screen. We'd all critique it, sit around, critique it, what's wrong, what they liked, what they didn't like. Not necessarily uh -huh. what's wrong, but what, you know. What could what improve, every maybe. Every artist, yeah, what, um, what you could improve. Um, and I was so nervous to submit. Yeah, was, it's photos. scary. <laughs> yeah, you're put on the spot with these professionals, people who have won awards, people who have exhibited so Were you, like, 18 and, at the time, I, like 17, 18? Yeah, I think 18, 19 um it's all kind of just like a blur but yeah I was very young and I remember showing up to this meeting and like oh like, you're so young like how old are you and, you know it's crazy mm -hmm. being around all these older people and old folks and like well, everyone's wondering what you submitted uh -huh. I think the first meeting I did not submit I got you 
the last second meeting, out. I think. Yeah, I think I did submit, but I got pretty good feedback on some shots I took when we went to the beach at this photo club. And it kind of just inspired me. Uh, kind of like, yeah. okay, it's kind of like, okay, like, yeah, we see potential. We see why you took these shots. That's very important. In photography. Uh, why did you take this shot? Why did you include this? Why didn't you include that? And I think that kind of motivated me and it yeah. kind of drove my passion for photography over drawing and painting every, every other medium. So that's honestly how I got started. And I just would go around Ebor. I think a lot of my earlier stuff on Instagram, they're all in Ebor. Nice. The majority of them. Very photogenic. <laughs> yeah, I love, I used to just love walking around Ebor. Took some shots in downtown. My first show was a shot of, in downtown. I don't even have it posted. I think I have it posted. I don't know. Someone has it because we did like a white elephant. I think it's white elephant um, of photography. So someone has my work out there. Oh, Pretty so you print. like traded like. Yeah, we traded uh, photography. You take a random cool. wrapped frame and you take it home. Interesting. So that club was a big inspiration for yeah. me because you were surrounded by people who had experience and knowledge and that's important when you're getting into anything. Um, mm -hmm. Community, I think it it's the political aspect of it that's really important is having this group of people with common ideologies or beliefs interests yeah, yeah. interests whatever but that's probably what i would bring it back to is how i got started in art was just community having yeah. that group of people that just motivate you and are excited to see what you're gonna come out with next yeah, absolutely. I know a lot of people who go like he'll, 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 who will go to like art school and then once they graduate, they kind of feel at a loss because they were doing these critiques every couple of weeks. They were surrounded by people who were making constantly and like thinking about the world in like different ways because you're given that space to do so. And once you graduate, it's kind of like, OK, now go work. And yeah. like that's kind of it. <laughs> um, so that's awesome that you were able to like find spaces outside of like educational type contexts that were able to like foster your growth as a photographer. That's really great because a lot of people have a hard time finding that. Um, so that's awesome. Thank, yeah. thank you for sharing that. I don't like don't be scared for those out there. Don't be scared to ask for opinions and critiques and try to find communities um because i think there are i think facebook's a good tool a good resource it is as easy as it is you know what it, it's true i'm still on it because a lot of people are still on facebook yeah exactly which goes back to our point of like these platforms are awful but at the same time how are we gonna like yeah. that's kind of a good way to connect with people that you don't already know yep. uh so i think you know it's all it's always pros and cons so you know, I also have a Facebook and it's mostly for like group pages as well, you know, <laughs> and like events because that's where it's all posted. So, um, uh, and so I wanted to also ask, uh, like, when did you see a shift kind of because you were doing a lot of street photography and like still like even the stuff that is a little bit more political is still considered, you know, street style type photography, but you know, you said you were taking pictures of like downtown and like in middle school, you're taking pictures of shoes and things like that. But like, when did you kind of start to see a shift of like subject matter being more a little bit more on the political side? I think I've always dabbled in the political stuff. OK. I grew up as a very angry child, very rebellious child. Yeah. So I had an early awakening as to kind of like wanting to discover myself and wanting to discover these taboo subjects. Mm -hmm. But definitely during the protest, the George Floyd protest was, I'd have to look back, but I think that was the point where I was posting the most. One of the biggest Political moments. things and subjects right. and 
it was it. That was it. That's all I was focused on because it was a time where you weren't the only one posting about it. So you kind of felt heard. Um, I think normally if you were to be posting all this political stuff, in 2018, you'd be fine. Mm-hmm. Well, we, you know, the, we could talk about the presidency during that time and stuff like that. <laughs> it was, I guess we don't got enough time to go into all that. Yeah, this was not really a wrong time to post political, but it was the time. The George Floyd process was like when I was out in the streets with my camera doing what I loved. Yeah. And I got to, you know, be with a group, a bunch of people protesting the same things it's and like i was everyone was paying yeah. attention all at the same time and it's like that hardly ever happens exactly yeah exactly it hardly ever happens like the whole world was paying attention there were protests happening all over the world it wasn't just the u.s uh, yeah, yeah i <laughs> i got to combine that anger of all like wanting to protest against the system and photography so i was like so jacked up hyped up absolutely yeah okay so well we will talk about some images that are from that time uh but first i want to kind of ask about in your a lot of the images on oh also this is another thing uh your uh, a lot of your work is on uh, a separate account called jesus is dead um great name <laughs> Thank you. definitely yeah, goes with the yeah. the, uh, the themes in your work because uh, I, I noticed a lot not all but a lot of your images include uh, religious iconography so like is there kind of a little bit of a story around that or uh, like did you grow up in a religious family things like that yeah um, I think an important part of art is exploring yourself. So I've always questioned religion because I did grow up in a Catholic household. Right. My grandma's Catholic. My mom was Catholic. She was Christian. Is now, is a lot of the Colombia like Catholic? Like a lot yes. of people? Okay. Oh yes, yes. It's big. Um, it's just it's culture. It's what you grow up in. You grow yeah. up in religion. Yeah. Um. Some people you think might not be religious still do the traditions. Yeah. Um, it's a bit personal. I wouldn't consider my dad religious, but he still still has things around the house, like re- that religious iconography around the house. You know, we still, how do I explain it? Kind of like we say, like, God God bless you, may God bless you, like, stuff like that. Right. So it's just part of your culture. It's what you grow up in. So it's hard to separate yourself from that. Yeah. I don't consider myself religious, but it's still such a big part of your upbringing. Yeah. Where <laughs> so it's big you influence. can't ignore it. Yeah. You go, you go on a road trip in Colombia and you see these... Oh, what do they call that? I lost the name for it. These prayer statues. Right. And every every town, every city you walk into. Right. It's a big part. Deeply ingrained. Thing. Yeah, it's so ingrained. It's hard we to have Confederate soldiers on statues, and they have Jesus. And <laughs> yeah, and all these saints and stuff. And I grew a deep hatred or yeah. the religion I was brought up with. Um, I don't have any disrespect for religious people, for people who believe in religion. It's just a subject that I've battled with. It's a topic I've battled with my entire life. So I, I'll portray it in a beautiful way in one artwork and i'll portray it in the opposite way in one artwork it's it's an internal struggle internal battle that i see and it's just it's just cool to just go to colombia and see all this 
iconography and when you road trip and see how other cultures depict it it's you can't avoid you can't ignore it because it's you know right. how you know how i don't want to say this in the wrong way you know how strong these people hold their beliefs because right. you were part of the, you were part of it so you kind of just learn to respect it mm-hmm. and observe it which mm-hmm. is what i've been doing recently and it brings yeah. those political it goes it brings yes. it goes back into the political aspect of it why are these people so motivated why do they have such a deep hatred it's because of their beliefs, their upbringing. Right. And I mean, I can even see like all of what you're explaining, like, and again, going back to one of the main original points I made in the very beginning of, of this conversation, the images like aesthetically are like very dark. A lot of times they're black and white, um, high contrast images. Uh, and you that kind of, but it's still like recognizing you're still focusing on the 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 saint or you know jesus like there's still this focus on like uh, like the recognition but then you're like manipulating it a little bit and you can kind of tell that there's a little bit of a, a struggle happening like even when you just look at the pictures so thank you yeah. for sharing no worries yeah and that that style that very high contrast very textured looks i think they they stem from my upbringing too in colombia where it's just very we we didn't grow up in middle class we grew up poor yeah so i think one time i made a realization is like why am i drawn to like street art so much it's because that's what i grew up in that's what i grew up witnessing you grew up you grew up seeing graffiti everywhere. You grew right. up seeing trash everywhere. You grew up yep. walking, going to school, seeing homeless people. Like it's it's just common. It's what you grew up with. You it becomes so normal. It's so familiar. Yeah. And I made that realization one time, and I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. There, there's a reason behind the style. What you're drawn to. Yeah. I I don't think I've ever made that connection myself but I also like grew up in a family very like a working class family and I've also been always very drawn to like images I I also lived in a very small town in Florida um that like no one knows where it is so um, I've always been drawn to photography that is like abandoned gas stations and like just like trash and stuff like street photography in that sense too and I never thought about it that way but that's definitely like it's probably pulling on like a little bit of a nostalgia cord for me that's probably why interesting that's that's great (laughs) um so uh just to be conscious of time there's like two other things I want to talk about but we can talk about them through the images that I'm going to share so the first one I wanted to share was actually um uh one of the first times I like remember or like learned that you did photography was you submitted to the files and film show which was shown at a gallery that I worked at and it was an image of um, this woman holding a sign that says, uh, what is it? Like the silent minor- minority stands with Trump. She has a cigarette just spilling out of her mouth. Um, she's wrapped in an American flag and there's a microphone in her face. <laughs> yeah. It's Can so- you uh, give a little background to that? Yeah, the I, I silent, think I know they, it, but they call themselves the silent majority. And it's just so, the image itself funny. just is so ironic because the mic's right in her face and she's yeah. like turned away from it. It's like you are being handed the mic. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
So that happened during a Back to the Blue protest. So they were backing the blue. Uh, some, Which was a response so, to BLM. Yeah, it was, yeah. So some BLM protesters were counter-protesting that. They went and counter-protested that, which you have the right to. Right. Um, so there was this clash going on between two different beliefs and blah, blah, blah. And this lady just stood out to me. So patriotic. So patriotic. um, I think it symbolized the movement that she was backing. So I kind of saw that she was getting interviewed. She had this look to her. She had smoking a cig. I had to. I had to get the shot. Yeah. And it's funny because there's like the Ford Mustangs in the back yeah. too. Like it's just so it turned telling. away her expression. It's so good. I just I keep looking at it. It's just so good. I hate it's a love hate relationship with the images I took at that protest. Sure. Because it, it I kind of went in as a photojournalist. Right. So I love that aspect that I got to capture these images, but it's a sad reality of America. Not kind of, it's a sad reality that there are these people that stand with Trump and that that belief, and even though he's out of all the stuff that comes with it, all the yeah, there's so white supremacy. beliefs and very fascist behavior and leaders it's it's scary it is very Um, scary and it is the silent majority because we we're we're surrounded with with like-minded people on social media we follow people who have similar interests so we don't really see the reality of these people who who want who want to limit the rights of others. Yeah. You will go to Tennessee. I went on a road trip to Tennessee and it's crazy. You still it is. see Confederate flags standing. You see people wearing face masks with Confederate flags. Oh That's yeah. Hilarious. Oh yeah. You, you get looked at because you are a minority. You get looked at weirdly because they're not used to seeing you. I went with my friends that are Muslim. Mm-hmm. It was awkward a fun experience it was yeah it was a fun experience awkward is the right word but yeah it's it's crazy i'm i just like exploring i you know i grew up in this country why not explore both sides of it yeah i've gone to gun shows i've gone i went when trump was in town i went to that yeah, at it's USF. All an experience. Um, it was where was it? I think Raymond James Stadium. He wasn't in the stadium, but it okay. was like right next to it. Yeah. Um, it's just it's eye opening. Yeah, I mean, I totally. I think a lot of photographers who are like taking photos like in these historical moments or like capturing things that dem- like show us what what the sad reality is, I think a lot of photographers really grapple with that, like, that kind of, like, love-hate relationship towards their work, because, but, at, like, and at the same time, a lot of that work is important, because, like you said, like, censor- censor- censorship, like, these might be the images that we need to refer to later <laughs> in order to get the truth, in order yep. to get the truth, like, it's it's that's kind of another reason why I wanted to start these conversations because a lot of stuff is being censored and it's like let's put it all this stuff to the forefront because like what are people gonna look to like history books aren't gonna be who are they written by you know what I'm saying like they're not gonna be <laughs> they're probably gonna be uh, biased they already are and it's only gonna it's only getting worse um, with the current like 
administration we are in. So I, I feel for you. I, I get why you have that relationship. And I'm, I'm also glad that you took, took the photo. Uh, the next image I, I want to talk about, which is a night that I remember so clearly because I lived right next to the mall, but oh, when man. all the protests were happening at the university mall and there was like helicopters going around, there was a, a, a store that was burnt down. I think a few streets away, a gas station got burned down. People were coming that. in like... It was, it felt almost like kind of dystopian because I don't think I'd ever seen so, like so many people and like so much violence happening by like just normal people. Like, I don't think I've ever like really seen that like in Florida, I guess. Like, you can see that kind of stuff happening in other parts of the world, but it was kind of the first time I had been right down the street from something that was happening like that. So the image that uh, you took was of someone, I think it, they were pouring milk onto the person's face. They had just gotten maced or something. Yeah, they got maced. Um, they were wearing contacts which you are told do not wear contacts to protest because mm -hmm. it, cl it clogs in between and it's going to burn like hell. And it was burning like hell. Um, luckily, someone had a Gatorade bottle with milk in it. For that, um, for that exact reason. Yeah. And I remember just being in the middle of it, like, I had to. I I had my phone on at the time. I think I had a I had a point and shoot film camera. Yeah. Um, and my phone, but I had to capture it. The moment it's very, you can tell it's very. It's frantic. so visceral. Um, we eventually got him. He worked at the Tijuana Flats down the street. Um, we were able to get him to call somebody help them out but the and we tried to get an ambulance there but they would not send an ambulance to the area which is so fucked up yeah it's pretty bizarre um, we called like twice and they were like no like the police i don't remember exactly why but i was so pissed off because it had to do with like protesting and it's like you're not gonna help it doesn't us. matter you're trying to help this kid i don't even care how old he is it's a person um, right. And a lot of pain, and they were like, "No," and it's just, it's sad. Uh, like the one people, the one place you're you're supposed to be able to call for yeah, help. Yeah, very dystopian. Saying, very. Yeah. Dystopian. And, and, and the, the disbelief that it was happening in your hometown. Exactly. Exactly. So it's important that we. I don't know. I think it's it's important that. We capture these moments and yeah know that it was people's first time being put on the spot with these things being shot a lot i got shot twice with rubber bullets Man. a lot of people i know got shot with rubber bullets it was insane how long were you there because i know it was going on like all night that day i was there I think it started at like two, three. I was there from like three to eleven. I left right before they burnt the the champs. I think. Yeah. I yep. was. I just just went home. As soon as I got home, I see that it was lit, lit on fire. Mm -hmm. Um. I was there. I was in the parking lot of the university mall, where they were throwing fire. Like the cops were guarding the mall. And there were just fireworks being shot at the cops. It was just, it was insane. I just couldn't believe it. Um, it was definitely a shift in the way people view political, um, political topics. Yeah. Um, I think it kind of made a lot of people pay more attention to everything. Because you had to, like no one else was talking about it, any, anything else. Yeah. 
we saw the reality of protesting. If you protest, this will happen to you. You will get mace. You will get shot at with rubber bullets. Even uh, if you don't do anything wrong, like yeah. I, oh, I know yeah. a couple other people who got maced and stuff, and or like wrongfully arrested. Like so much of that. So much happens. Yeah, me and my friend made a little pocket zine where you could, where we put down all like a bunch of information of like lawyers who will like represent you, uh, at, you know, at no cost and stuff like that because so much of that stuff was happening. And it's like these people, the, all these people need these resources. Like, let's hurry up, print a bunch of these out and like distribute them. And it's just something that they can throw in their pocket. I just, that itself is art, art too. It's why art is important. Someone, you made those zines. They were very integral with what was going on because it was just insane. And again, it was, a, I think it was a, a big time where a lot of people who had never gotten involved with this stuff, like started to show out and it's like, they're unprepared. Like the person in your photo wearing contacts, they probably didn't know like yeah. protest, like, I guess etiquette may maybe is the right word. I don't know, <laughs> but um, it's it's. I just like uh, I I I really appreciate like distributing resources. So that was kind of like what we tried to do in that moment that could be helpful. <clears throat> you know so. Okay, and then just to be conscious of time. I'm going to just jump to the uh, photo in a frame. There's many bullet like shots through it. There's an image in there. Uh, and there's like what looks like could be like blood splatters. Uh, can you explain this? Yeah. Because so it's a lot different from a lot of your other stuff, which is why I wanted to talk about it. Yeah, so that's framed matted printed on cool paper like expensive paper whatever because it had yeah. someone in the art community help me archival out that. yeah um it's a it's a long exposure that i took during i think it was that same day that the first day of the protest where uh, the CVS was being looted yeah. and a bunch of cops came in with like full riot gears. They had the shields on and stuff like, like so unnecessary, but they rushed in and as they were coming to guard in, I had, it was an accidental shot. Like okay. I meant to take it, but it was an accidental to where it was too long of an exposure. Right. But I was looking right. back, and you you kind of still can see the bottom right corner says police. Uh huh. I made a red and red and greenish, very toxic kind of looking. Mm hmm. Um, to represent how frantic it was. How yeah. Crazy it was. <laughs> yeah. Um. But it, I had prints today, but it still wasn't doing enough for me. It didn't really represent the feelings I had for that time. Yeah. So I had a friend who owns a couple of guns mm -hmm. and I had this idea where this artwork was going to be kind of an experience or I don't know if experience is the right word. It's supposed to emit an emotion of this is what it feels like this, to live in a police state. Yeah. So a lot of Anna Taylor was happening. People were getting shot by the police. People are still getting shot at by the police. It's a nonstop issue. Yeah. I took this photo with the mat to a shooting range with my friend. Mm -hmm. It was totally up for the idea. So I shot it to where the bullet holes are opening towards the viewer. Yes. So I shot it. I shot at it in reverse. Right. Um. Because this is what it, it's like to live in America as a minority. This is what you fear. Um, and then I framed it and put blood splatters all over it. So not blood. It's just like a 
acrylic paint or whatever. Yeah. Had a lot of fun making it. But yeah. I was, I submitted it to this protest show. Um, it's funny enough, it was at a wine bar in Clearwater. Okay. Very funny. They were having a protest show with like protest. I don't know if that's the right people. audience, but. Yeah. So hey. uh, this show, a photographer in the community was also in the show. And he was also, he also got a lot of good captures of protests. Yeah. Um, but it was for that show. I remember making it the night before I was supposed to drop off artwork. And it's my favorite, one of my favorite artworks I've made because, like I said, it's supposed to represent an experience. It's kind of fucked up. This is the American yeah. experience for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, where someone who's supposed to protect and serve it does complete opposite. No. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'm, I'm really glad I like chose this to talk about because I would have, you know, I don't, I would have never known like that story behind it. Uh, but I thought it was, you know, the bullet holes and everything. I was like, yeah, there's the something else. Bullet. There's something more going on here that. Or not, they're not real bullets, but I shot at them with like real yeah. weapons. And it's just, wow. I, it was an experience itself going to the shooting range and shooting an AK-47, yeah. a shotgun, and yeah. like a magnum. I was like, oh, shit. Like, it's, a, it's wild. Because Shooting it's, a it's gun a is, like, too. wild that's if a, you've never done it. That's a whole political topic, guns. Yeah, um, that's a whole nother. But, yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, that's, thank, that's the story yeah, behind thank you it. for sharing. Uh, let's see. And then the last little things I wanted to ask is... Is there anyone that you look to specifically for inspiration or is there a specific photographer or is it just lived experience? Lived experiences, um, friends in the community, anyone who sits down and has talked to me about art, their art or my art, it's all mm -hmm. an inspiration. Mm -hmm. um, it brings it back to that community. Um, anyone who has shared artwork, who has showed interest in art, um, or who has even like said, wow, I love your art, that's all. I'd give a shout out to everyone. I don't know, it sounds cheesy. Yeah. Shout out to everyone. Yeah, everyone in the Tampa community. Um, I don't know. Uh, specific influences, just everything, lived experiences. A uh, big shout out to the street art movements in Colombia. I follow a few pages there. I've talked to a few street artists through social media. It's funny enough. Yeah. Connect through social media. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's great. Thank you again for coming here and sharing all of this wonderful info. Thank you. Yeah, I love this. I'm so excited. To... Yeah. Um, I'm really looking forward to all the other conversations as well, but I just really appreciate your time. And then just a little shout out to mutual aid organization, uh, Tampa Food Not Bombs. They always need volunteers. Uh, they always need resources. Um, I'm gonna donate a little bit of money to them after I get off the phone with you, uh, just to kind of, you know, try to do something in this crazy world we're living in. <laughs> Uh, try, try to feed people. So that's a shout out to Tampa Food Not Bombs. If you got a couple of extra dollars, please throw them something. They always need resources. There's plenty of people who need food. So thank you again, Jefferson, you. for being part of this, for being my very first guest. <laughs> Um, I'm really excited to share this conversation. Um, I'm going to share this on my Patreon first. Um, I'm going to share it tomorrow, um, but then this will be uploaded about a week from now for the world to see. So thanks again so much. <laughs> and no Thank you. I hope to see y'all in the next one.